Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Book Club. Remember, no weight loss, no self-help, just stuff that rolls, explodes, and make noise. We're here with probably the premier Southern California hot rod historian, Pat Ganahl. Pat has written, what, 18 books now? Yep. Okay, I, you never run out of stuff. You must have more photographs and memorabilia from this period. Oh, yes, and this, this book, I've got 30 to 40,000 photos in my archive that right. I've been collecting, and this only has 350 of them in it, but it's like the best 350. You know, it's amazing to me because it's primarily a, a picture book, but with captions and stories, and if, uh, especially if you're in my age group, this is the stuff you remember as a kid being 13, 14 years old. Uh, so what's your youngest old. memory of, of a hot rod? How old a kid were you? Uh, I was, I saw a car driving into El Segundo High School that had, uh, it was a channeled uh, 32 or Model A Roadster with right. cycle fenders on it. And I saw this thing turn into the high school parking lot and saw the fenders turn with the front wheels. Yeah. It was white and it made a lot of noise. I was probably seven, eight years old. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And, it, and this was a beach town. Uh, shortly thereafter, some kids came driving down our street with a 29 Roadster pickup that had stakes in the back and sort of a roof made on the top and it was covered with palm fronds. Okay. And it was primered and it had about, you know, I, I remember like six or eight, you know, guys and girls in it and they were right. all, they were going to the beach, they were in their bathing suits or whatever and they having, it was just a fun thing. It and doesn't I, get more California than that. Yeah, and I said, man, this is, this is cool. You know, so how old were stuff. you when you started collecting all these images? Well, that was after I started working at Street Rider Magazine in 73, right. and okay. I just sort of fell into that job. And, uh, uh, but I was always interested in, when I read the magazines, it was the historical, fo the historical articles that, that I liked the best, the right. old black and white stuff, when they talk about the old days. Well, here's the fun thing. I'm gonna show you a picture, see if you can guess who this gentleman is before we tell. Uh, I saw him just the other day. He's still going strong. You figure out who, that's George Barris, a young George Barris. Very young. Uh, with, a, with, with a couple of relatives, is that who that is? Well, this is the show queen over here. Oh. George is always scheming on the show queen. Yeah, and I like how the show queen, not really dressed like a show queen now, just thought I... Oh, that was pretty hot for 1950 yeah. <laughs> or whatever right, it right. was. But this is his aunt, I right. think her name was Edith. Uh, he, I forget how he lost his parents, but right. his aunt raised George and Sam okay. up in the Sacramento area uh, from the time they were young kids. Right, and I right. said, well, she was really like my mother. And she lived in Roseville and came over to the show. This is the Oakland Roadster show. Right? Okay. And uh, Barris had about uh, eight custom cars that he brought up. Wow. So he was already a success by then. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, and as a note on that, uh, when I was working at Peterson uh, at Hot Rod, one of the f two of the first people I looked up when I got there were Tom Medley and Eric Rickman, who were still there. And we had Tom Medley. Tom Medley just passed away, know, sadly. Right. Yeah. But we uh, had him on the website here. He's a fascinating gentleman. Oh, fantastic. Uh, here's Tom Medley. Just show you what we're talking about. And we're here with one of the most famous, if not the most famous, automotive cartoonists of all time, Tom Medley. He uh, wrote in Hot Rod Magazine. When I was a kid, I used to see his cartoons all the time. <laughs> Stroker McGurk. In fact, hand me that Stroker McGurk. Here we go. This was a very famous cartoon character that appeared on the pages of Hot Rod Magazine. And this one is famous because this is the first time a parachute was ever used on a car. That's right. Before they did it, did it for real at Bonneville and on the drag strips, did you ever think that this would become such a no. beloved character? No. Yeah. You just did it for fun. Well, yeah, and, uh, and the funny part of it was that all the time that I was there at Hot Rod when I was doing those things, I, I honestly thought that it was just local. Right. And Jesus, all of a sudden, uh, I, I couldn't even believe it. When, when this deal we, we just went through here, I never knew so many people even knew, remembered me, and older guys that remember me little. See, a lot of the stuff that I would do is stuff that, that, that I would do when I was working on something, or I'd see somebody, they, they put, put the rear end gear in wrong, and they, right. and they fire it up, and it goes out the back score, you know, and all <laughs> that stuff. In 1950, Eric Rickman was a photographer in Oakland, and he went and photographed that whole first Oakland Roaster show on 4x5 film with his Graflex camera. But he, that's how he got hired by Peterson to be the first photographer for Peterson wow. Publishing because he did such a good job on, yeah. on this, and they hired him afterwards. So he had this box 
of negatives. There were 200 negatives in this box, a Kodak box. He brought it into my office when I was at Rod and Custom and said, here, Pat, you can use this because you, you know, put this in your collection because you'll, you'll keep it. Are so, any of those negatives in here? Yeah, that, that okay. one that you just saw. Okay, that's okay. That's where that comes from. Now, you told me something interesting. This was possibly going to be the other shot for the cover. Is that correct? Right. I like the one-piece bathing suit. Ooh. That matches the yeah. car. He is a style of car you don't really see anymore. <clears throat> the chopped and channeled and lowered and... Although you do see some lowered, but not some... These didn't really hold up well, did they? Well, the reason they didn't hold up is because they were newer cars, and primarily what they were were fancy paint jobs, and right. the paint was so fancy, the early candy colors and that sort of thing, that it uh, deteriorated quickly. Right. And when the paint job went away, then the car wasn't nice yeah. anymore, and since they were fairly new, they took them to the junkyards and stripped the parts. Yeah. And, you know, as opposed to an old hot rod, you never would cut up or throw away an old hot rod, yeah. keep rebuilding it and making it more modern. Tell me about this crash, what is that? Well, this is the famous uh, Stuart Hilborn streamliner, the guy who invented fuel injection. Right. Uh, that is used. Hilborn, yeah. And uh, what's totally amazing about this photo is that he, only, he broke his back, but he survived. And right. this car was so tight, he couldn't, there was no roll bar, and he couldn't get inside the car. There was nowhere to go. He had to turn sideways just to get in the seat. And what happened was, as you can see in his photo that Bill Burke took, that the left rear spoke wheel collapsed. The spokes all right. broke out of it, and the car flipped over. Wow. And while he was in the hospital, his friends rebuilt the car, and he went back and set the first... Uh, 150 mile an hour record with it. And you also uh, do a, a leather bound version as well. Well, the publisher liked the book so much that uh, this is the first time he's done a leather bound version that there's only 500 of these that were printed right. and they're numbered and they are all signed by me. Okay. So it's for collectors. Um, right, okay. These things do go up in value. Well, <laughs> well, it's just a fascinating read. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it, it's an era that will probably never be recreated. And Pat has beautifully documented it. So there's two versions of the book. This one's a couple of bucks more. I actually prefer this version because I like seeing the picture on the cover. But, uh, and you can get it at Amazon. You can get it at uh, Auto Books in Magnolia and Burbank, on Magnolia in Burbank, California. Yes, definitely. Or from CarTech. Go on their website. Definitely. Okay. Directly from CarTech.com. Cool. Pat, thank you very much. Always cool. a pleasure. Thank you, Jay. I Let's really more, appreciate it. Some more of these books out. We like these books. Mm-hmm. <laughs>